I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Thursday July the 30th where it was a disappointing day on Wednesday had an empty victory if you can call it a victory at all uh, actually didn't get the uh, the minimum cash uh, policy voted down they just ended up getting it watered down so much that it didn't achieve any of the objectives that were trying to get done there uh, we'll have to commend the fight. I tell you what, the uh, the Midwest uh, affiliates they they gave it a go. Uh, won't mention their names here, in, in uh, spite of uh, or in fear of uh, retaliation. But uh, there were several guys there that that really uh, put their heart and soul into it. Tried to get something done that could save the industry and bring about uh, price discovery and competitive. Uh, change here, but uh, we didn't get that done. Uh, so, so as they went to the the NCBA summer business meeting there in Denver, uh, your Midwestern affiliates uh, were looking to get a minimum requirement of negotiated cash trade out of the Packers, and uh, and uh, we we'd been talking about this. We've got the the bill in both the Senate and the House for 5014 minimum cash requirement. They were just trying to get policy set for through NCBA which would basically make it a shoe in because that is the the voice of the industry uh, whether we like it or not and somebody sent me a deal I don't know if it's true or not but uh, one in every 33 uh, cattle producers is a member of NCBA so quite a voice there but uh, anyways uh, what they what your uh, your Midwestern affiliates went in there with they, they saw they didn't have the votes and so they went in and they compromised and watered it down quite a bit before we even started so instead of having a set number for a percentage uh, minimum uh, negotiated cash trade they decided to uh, to have it regional and and just make it fair within the major packing facilities in each region and kind of have that set but but set something set some minimum mandated requirement there but uh, after six hours of deliberation there uh, they finally just uh, had to give in and uh, but uh, so what's what the uh, policy now says that they will encourage voluntary voluntary is the key word here so I guess that means ask them nicely if they will uh, participate in uh, in more uh, trade to, for for price discovery and transparency and things like that uh, and and so we didn't get anything uh, they did say that uh, they would put some triggers in there, uh, some set points in there that will be uh, set and provided uh, as determined by an NCBA funded, uh, basically a research analyst. Uh, so they they will set those those uh, parameters or those triggers in each region, and if we don't. Uh, get those at some point if robust price discovery is not achieved then the NCBA will pursue legislative or regulatory solutions so we well, kicked the can uh, uh, on down the dirt road just a little bit more so basically they, they've uh, we had they left the door cracked just a little bit uh, for some kind of change there uh, and then they set up a series of hoops that you have to jump through in order to get right back to where they were on Wednesday to try to get something done. But uh, I will say uh, we had several more of the state affiliates come in. Uh, New Mexico and Ohio were both prepared to vote for the, the minimum uh, mandated uh, cash trade there. Uh, did not get that done. Uh, you know there were several other things that went into this. Uh, they're saying that they're gonna uh, they're gonna ask for voluntary uh, trade and, and uh, more robust trade there, and then they're gonna start looking at that in October, which is is really convenient because that's after uh, the uh, reauthorization of mandatory price reporting, which will happen in September, and then the USDA investigative report. Uh, basically told us that we could use mandatory price reporting to enable this minimum cash requirement which they said this is what you guys need if you're unhappy about uh, the gouging and the manipulation of prices here uh, but they just pretty much thumbed their nose at the USDA report there and uh, we're not able to get that done but if we were going to use mandatory price reporting to uh, oversee that and to enforce that 
Well, if that doesn't get done in September, well then, uh, then this isn't looked at until October. Well, then that ship's already sailed. You got to wait another five years before you can uh, tap into mandatory price reporting again. So, uh, moral of the story is, is nothing got done. And uh, there were some other things that went in there on some resolutions on policy that had to do with mandatory price reporting. And uh, they, they've put, put it in there in wording, which will likely get put into reauthorization of mandatory price reporting, that now negotiated grid is, is to be considered cash. And so this goes right to the bid the grid uh, that they've been wanting to do and uh, basically uh, put you know everything into the packers hands so there'll be no liability on your packers you know if they buy a set of cattle uh, on hoof that, that aren't very good they won't have to stand any liability and likely all of our cash trade will be a negotiated grid which in the past negotiated grid has been a good way to market your cattle been the second best way next to negotiated cash but uh, now they were are asking them to uh, to negotiate a base grid price and then uh, once your your cattle go into the packing plant and then they will establish the premiums and discounts and and tell you how your cattle did and uh, you know that's just a tick better than just railing the cattle and and you guys know that and uh, my dad always told me the only difference uh, between putting your cattle in on the rail or having them stolen is if you send them in on the rail you have to pay the freight but uh, that, that's kind of what goes into that and, and uh, so uh, it's not like we can go up to, to the packing plant and peek through the windows and see how the cattle are actually doing uh, you'll have to wait and see how they did and uh, you know it's just very disgusting that uh, we can't get anything done uh, your big affiliates uh, in the Southern Plains, uh, Texas Cattle Feeders, uh, Kansas Livestock Association, uh, you know, they're just armed with so much because they have all those fed cattle sales. If you uh, read Cassie Fish, she pointed out that uh, our, the bulk of our feed, feedlot and the fed cattle sales are back in the south again. Over the last several years, they've been migrating back north, but now they're back in the south. So if you look at Kansas and then the Texas feedlot areas, which includes uh, the Oklahoma Panhandle and eastern New Mexico, they are now feeding half the fed cattle so when you're armed with that many uh, that much volume of fed cattle sales and subsequently that many uh, checkoff dollars your other guys just can't compete with you and so all of your grassroots uh, producers you guys in the southeast that are raising cattle you guys in Missouri you guys in, in Nebraska both of those states have huge cow numbers uh, you guys in Oklahoma that don't have any representation for them, uh, all they're representing is the few feedlots there in the Oklahoma Panhandle, uh, those guys are just getting pushed around and, and they just can't get uh, enough put together to, to offset your, your major uh, your cattle feeders organizations there in Texas and Kansas and, and it's very unfortunate. So what do we look at now guys? Well, there is still legislation out there for the 5014. Chuck Grassley's a bill there and, and co-signed with John Tester out of Montana, who's a Democrat. Then they've got, they've got Republicans and Democrats in major ag states signed on to that. That is still there. That has nothing to do with this. This was just policy for NCBA, which would have made that much easier to go through. But we can still get the 5014 uh, with Chuck Grassley's bill. The problem is you've got your, your Senate Ag Chairman there, Pat Roberts, obstructing it and he will not put that 5014 bill up for a hearing and a, and a committee vote. So, uh, and it's, it's going to be almost impossible to get him to do that uh, because he's got interests that uh, uh, just behoove him not to put it up. And he's a lame duck. Uh, that he's, he's in the last uh, several weeks here of his uh, seat. Uh, it's going to get filled hopefully by somebody a whole lot better and uh, I'm not sure if there will be a, a chairman there. I'm sure they'll vote somebody else in there as chairman, but we needed to get something done now. And uh, I don't know how they could get Pat Roberts to, to put that up for a hearing and, and put that up for a vote uh, short of uh, going to Topeka and tar and feathering him. And I'm sure Steve Stratford uh, out of Pratt would be more than happy to lead the charge to go do that. But 
We're not going to be able to get that done. And it would not surprise me if there's not a bigger push now to get the referendum on the beef checkoff. As we've seen uh, some of these uh, bigger affiliates uh, use the checkoff dollars against your grassroots producers. And, uh, you know, I don't know what would happen if we get the referendum. Uh, likely we would still come back with some kind of uh, industry funded uh, promotion uh, there to, to go forward. But it's just gotten too big, too much money in there, too much power, too much power in the wrong hands. And the moral of this whole story that happened in Denver on Wednesday is the people in power have no sense of responsibility to the history, the tradition, or the future of this industry. And it is sickening to watch. Let's talk about the board on Wednesday. Your August live cattle futures up 55 cents at 101.45. October up $1.05 at 106.05. You're going out from there down two cents on your farthest out traded month of December 21 and then to up dollar uh, seven. So very, very strong on your live cattle futures. Your, your feeder cattle futures were strong too. And now it's starting to become evident that uh, your USDA inventory reports uh, over the last year and a half have totally missed how many cattle we lost in, in the winter of 2019. We knew that there were big losses there. They did not take those into effect. They were projecting uh, a, a big calf crop uh, that we would be feeding and trying to get through right now. Uh, evidently, even after the COVID and the shutdowns there, uh, it's not as bad as what they thought. And then couple that with all the, the cattle that's been going to these uh, custom uh, slaughters and uh, in places like that, it, it's just uh, the, the cattle, there's not as many of them out there. Now, why those weights, those carcass weights on the average steer are so much bigger than a year ago, well, that, that, that just goes into the equation. But I tell you what, it, it's, it's kind of up in the air, and, and, uh, but there's a lot of, of support here to push on these uh, feeder cattle futures and live cattle futures. Your August feeder cattle were up $1.27 at $141.97 now trading at a big premium and it's going to be august here at the end of the week guys but your august feeder cattle your spot feeder cattle contract is now trading well over three dollar premium to what cash uh, feeder cattle are bringing and they've been bringing big prices with all these hard green grass yearlings coming to town I'm not sure if we could get them any higher but it's unbelievable how strong this futures market is September feeder cattle futures up $1.27 at $142.57 go on your out fronts there uh, up just 25 cents which was your furthest out feeder cattle traded month there May of 21 to up $1.32 on your closer buys your fat cattle, I tell you what, your Packers got so excited about the big victory that they got in Denver, they just come out and then started paying more for cattle uh, on Wednesday. And we had significant trade, probably going to be the biggest day of the week, but uh, had uh, significant uh, cash trade in all of your, your major cattle feeding areas that report. Iowa had confirmed sales of 5,500 head. 101 to 102 and I had a guy messaging me that said there were actually a set of cattle and they were probably the 102 because that's what they brought actually a set of cattle in Iowa that Packers volleyed back and forth uh, you know it, it was very very exciting it was like a tennis match you know somebody bid a dollar somebody else bid a dollar one and then the guy come back at a dollar two which is absolutely unheard of in, in your fed cattle buying uh, direct but it happened in Iowa, mark that down, but that would be, a, that would be a, towards the top, the extreme top of last week's spread there from 101 to 102, but not that much live trade in Iowa. It was mostly all at 160 dressed, and that'd be at the, at the top of last week's spread also. Nebraska, 4,900 had confirmed there, all at 160 dressed, and that's two bucks better than last week, guys. Kansas. Big movement, Kansas, 13,100 head on Wednesday, 95 to 97.50, mostly at 97. That's a buck higher. Same in Texas on 5,900 head, 95, 97 and a half, mostly all 97. Box beef cutout values were kind of mixed. 
uh, but hanging right there with Choice just over $2 a pound. But Choice cuts on Wednesday afternoon, 201.11. That was down a buck 85. But selects were up 117 at 189.49. And it seems like they find a, found some support right in there with, with your Choice cuts just over $2 a pound. Uh, let's talk about your uh, slaughter. Your slaughter is, is running pretty good and has been here for several weeks. So we're, we're back up to what, whatever, however fast the Packers want to use the chain speeds. Uh, they don't seem to re really be pushing it at all. They're just, uh, we're just back up to par. But 355,000 through Wednesday, that's 3,000 more than last week. 5,000 less than the same week a year ago, but we still seem to be getting through these cattle, although that the carcass weights are very heavy, and we'll find out the latest on those on Thursday. Talking about your feeder cattle, don't forget winter livestock auction, uh, which has several locations, but the, the southern Kansas areas are the ones that are really going to have uh, an offering for you this week. Here on Thursday, Pratt, Kansas is looking at 5,000 head, mostly all green grass yearlings. There would have been more, but I'll tell you what, we've been getting so much moisture uh, in the southern plains. We've even had it in the Texas panhandle. Uh, had, had quite a bit. Of, it's been spotty around, but some places are getting really, really good moisture, and it's just amazing how fast this country greens up when you get a little bit of moisture on it, especially after it's been so dry. But uh, Pratt expecting a sure 5,000 there. They would have had more, but uh, it's still a pretty good run for them here on Thursday. Then you go to Dodge City, and they've got 12,000 head, mostly green grass yearling cattle. Uh, they're going to be selling on Friday and Saturday, so they're not had, they didn't have a sale on, the, on Wednesday. Uh, they moved all their cattle to the big special with 12,000 head on offer Friday and Saturday plus another 5,000 on their video sale that they're going to have late Friday morning. So don't forget that if you guys are needing some green grass yearlings, you can get all you need right there with winter livestock. How about uh, your real-time index on DV auction late in the day on Wednesday, sitting at 138.65, down 46 cents. So that's a significant drop. And then if you look and see that your, your weighted average on all those cattle that sold uh, on Wednesday, dropped your, your weighted average weight below 800 pounds. It's been running uh, well over 800 pounds with all these big yearlings, but we're starting to get more and more uh, weaned calves in there, uh, feeding calves, fall born, and so they're pulling that weight down a little bit, and your weighted average weight was down to 798 pounds, which was five pounds less than it was uh, on Tuesday. Let's talk about some of your big sales on Wednesday. OKC West, El Reno, Oklahoma, 5,800 head for the two-day sale, uh, and it was lower, and we haven't seen that for a while, uh, but we're now we're getting into the midweek sales, which were, were quite a bit higher last week, so we're running off of a higher la uh, market last week, so, uh, so it, it, you can expect it to be some lower as, as it kind of settles in here, but feeder steers steady to three bucks lower, feeder heifers two to four dollars lower, talking to John Cooper there, he told me about a real nice set of steers that sold through there uh, that sure weren't any lower. 59 head, 824 pound steers, bring 140 bucks right there in the ring in El Reno, Oklahoma. Uh, they had a light test of calves on Tuesday with a lower undertone, but it wasn't well tested there. We're just not seeing that many calves in that part of the country, but we are starting to see more of these fall born wean calves coming to town and they're just not quite as attractive to the buyers or not nearly as attractive as those green grass yearlings even though the quality is much better in most cases. How about Springfield Livestock Marketing Center? Tonto Cassie brought his calves to town and he has got excellent quality. He's got great genetics there on his ranch uh, right there on the interstate close to Springfield. He's a partner in that cell at, at Springfield Livestock Marketing Center. He's big into real estate and just a prince of a man there. If you don't know Tonto Cassie, you need to get to knowing him because he's really a nice guy. Brought his calves in there. Uh, he had 80 steer calves, 606 pounds, all weaned, 167.50, all black. The heifers off of them, 77 head of them, weighed 604 at $150.10. So pretty good sale on some wean calves there, guys, and I told you about those coming into town. How about South Central Regional Stockyards, the Patton family there, 
Dave, the old man, Bill and Ross, uh, the boys, I tell you what, they do a good job in there and they get the quality. I tell you what, for, for South Central Missouri, they get the best quality in there. And, and uh, they had some really good yearling steers in there on Wednesday, 113 head, 834 pound steers bring 140.75. And that's a good sale there. Now let's talk about Winfield Livestock Auction in Winfield, Kansas. They got their share of the green grass uh, yearling steers in there too. Look at these loads. And I couldn't even fit them all on the screen, guys. Winfield, Kansas. You guys may not have heard of that sale very much, but uh, we're getting information from them. We're going to talk about them more and more all the time. Look at them. Every one of these loads right up close to the top of the market that we've seen here the last several weeks. And the one uh, load that I couldn't fit on the screen I'm going to tell you about, 57 head, 889 pound steers, bring $136. And that's your feeder flash for Thursday.